Hi guys and welcome to my wrap up for March. Um, I'm so excited. Um, so I read five books this month and um, I'm going to go through the ones that I read from the one that I would most recommend to the one that I would least recommend. So just to put it out there, I don't have some of the books with me because they're either on my Kindle which is uh, currently uh, at university or <laughs> I borrowed them from my local library and have since returned them but I'll still give you the author name and title so you can go out and check it you can go out and check it out if you so desire so anyway without any damadu let's get into it so the first book that I would highly 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 recommend is A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. This book is, oh, it, it's insanity. It's one of, I, I, I'm speechless about it. It's, it's amazing. I'll give you a little synopsis. Um, so the main character is called Alex and he lives at home with his P&M, which is his mum and dad and he is the leader of his group of droogies, which um, Akka, his group. And they live in a kind of society where teenagers rule the streets and there's kind of an acceptance of hyper-violence and youth supremacy, as it were. Um, but through the course of the novel, Alex undergoes a um, extremely traumatic ordeal um and yeah he's never the same well i'll let you discover that for yourselves if you decide to read this novel um i i loved it so much um the only thing that might be a little bit i don't know if i'd say intimidating but a little bit might turn you off is the fact that this society well the youth teenagers mainly speak in a slang-like language called Nadza, which hence like PNM and um, Droogy, Gulliver, Vidi, uh, Malenki, all of these <laughs> different slang words that may be difficult to grasp at first but eventually you kind of get used to it within context of sentences and that kind of stuff. So by the end, you, you kind of, you know what's going on. You know what's being said, which is always helpful. But I could not recommend this highly enough. And the Kubrick film adaptation is also brilliant. Highly recommend. It's amazing. 10 out of 10. Hey. <laughs> so that was the first book I would recommend. Now we've got books two and three, who are written by my absolute icon, my queen bee. Agatha Christie. We have Murder on the Orient Express and, and then there were none. So I'll start off with Murder on the Orient Express because you know it's got one of the most prolific endings of any book potentially ever. Um, most people know who the killer is before they've even read it or seen an adaptation. It's that well known. Um, but anyway I'll give you a brief synopsis yet again. Um, so a man is murdered on a train called the Orient Express ah. um, and Monsieur Poirot has to try and work out who done it and it's brilliant I mean there is kind of thing I've seen adaptations before I read this so you know you kind of know who the killer is but still it I really enjoy sort of brushing that to the back of my mind and focusing on trying to work it out by the clues that are given, the interviews that each of the passengers has. Um, oh, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And I think potentially if you've seen the adaptations, you're looking more for clues um, that point towards the conclusion that you already know exists. But it's so good. So good. So well written and compelling and I finished this within a night. So you know, it was doing something right. And now we move on to 
and then there were none. So the BBC did an adaptation of this in 2015, which I reviewed on my channel. I will leave the link down below uh, because you know, Aiden Turner, need I say more? Um, so pretty much, synopsis of this is that 10 strangers are invited to Soldier Island, which is a little island off the Devon coast and they're completely cut off from the mainland and <clears throat> once they arrive on this island they're all accused of a terrible crime a murder that they are each of them have committed and <clears throat> after this point people start dying off like flies in very specific manners to um, a poem that is displayed in this house and that's titled Ten Little Soldier Boys. It's so good. Um, I loved the way that the killer was revealed. It was ingenious. I loved it. I loved it so much. If you love a good murder mystery, Agatha Christie's your queen. I mean, you need go no further. And it's also, it also fun fact, came first in a global vote to find the world's favourite Agatha Christie novel. So, you know, it's doing something right. So, moving on. We then have my only non-fiction book that I read this month, and that is How to Write a Novel in Six Months by Thomas Empson. Now, we actually had the pleasure of having him come in and talk our, our um, one of our fiction lectures this term and he was such a such a nice guy and he gave us a crash course in this and uh even got it signed so oh okay you can't see that can you can't see that hey <laughs> um but this novel is perfect for you if you want to finally get that novel done because i know so many people that have said oh yeah i want to write a novel but saying you're going to write it and actually writing it are two different things I was like oh I didn't find time this you can get 60,000 words done in six months and you can still have a life like you set weekly targets and then you allow weeks for editing you can even have days off you just adapt um, how many words you do on the other days so if you do like 10,000 words a week well, not 10,000, let's say... Uh, maybe like 5,000. Then you've only got to do like... Maybe... A thousand words for five days and then get two days off. I mean, you can have a life. And this is brilliant. I've used some of the techniques from this book. And I'm just about to finish my third novel. So that should be out by April. Well, it is April. It should be out by May. That is what I meant. I would highly recommend this as a gift to someone who wants to write a novel. Now we've uh, gone through all the ones that I would recommend. Let's talk about the one fiction novel that I would not recommend. The one that disappointed me so much. I had such high expectations and I feel cheated which is one of the worst things you can make a reader feel and that is Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon Nicola Nicola babe <sighs> Right Let me say this off the bat The writing is extremely good her writing style is extremely strong, clear, concise, beautiful, right? Now I've got that out of the way. I, I felt so disappointed. Every promotional thing I have seen for this book has said that this is the next Fortinar Stars. I will say this straight out and out. This is not the next Fortinar Stars. This is not not even close i'll give you a brief synopsis rundown and i'll explain definitely why it's not the next fault in our stars so everything everything is about a girl who has lived inside her house for her whole life because she has i believe it's bubble boy syndrome where you know allergic to the world and that and 
she sees her neighbour from across the road and they kind of start a little texting relationship and then he actually meets her face to face and you know love at first sight and all that bullshit can you tell i don't believe in love at first sight i mean i, I know it's difficult i mean i i'm so subtle <laughs> but um i i i don't i don't believe in love at first sight um and i don't like it as a bloody cliche in a bloody novel even but, but, Even bloody Twilight didn't have the love at first sight thing. There, I've said it. I've said it. It it doesn't. She doesn't walk into that classroom and instantly fall in love with him. That is all I'm gonna say. And when I have to praise Twilight, it's a dark day. I just oh it. Oh. I mean, okay. So the premise itself is interesting. Okay. If they had done something with it, here it's like someone handed her an amazing plot and said, "Here, go and do something with it. Do something heartbreaking and profound and poignant." And it's just a really, the ending is really cheesy. It is such a cop out, and it's cheesy. I, I didn't find that I particularly cared about these characters either. I mean, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. It's, oh, mm, I was so disappointed. I wanted this novel to be really, really good. I wanted it. Oh, I, I think why I'm being extra harsh on this is because if you're gonna call it the next Fault in Our Stars, the Fault in Our Stars is the first no well, it was one of the first novels that actually made me sob. I don't cry usually when I'm reading books, apart from during Deathly Hallows and the Fault in Our Stars. I ugly cried. I went into mourning after reading the Fault in Our Stars. I want you if you're going to compare it to that, to take out my heart from my chest, rip it out, stamp on it, give me characters that are believable, that are real, that fall in love over a prolonged period of time. They don't just instantly fall in love with the first person they see, like, what up? I want you to make me feel what these characters are feeling. I want you to make me feel devastated i want you to make me feel all of these things and i just didn't this was another book that i read in a night and after i finished i was just like why did i why did i waste my time reading that i <sighs> the ending was such a cop out and i i'm gonna be controversial here right i would say this is one of the worst young adult endings i have read for a long ass time. And it's funny, at the end of February, I reread 13 Reasons Why. After that, I read this. It, it just makes you appreciate how this book is catering to this kind of romanticized image of I don't know if I'd go so far as to say illness, but it's just this, oh, everything's perfect at the end, whereas Certain Reason Why it doesn't shy away and it does not speak down to its reader. It treats them as intelligent human beings, whereas Everything Everything, I don't think does. And I'm so disappointed in this. But I will say again, the writing is really good. Um, that's my one praise. I would, uh, if you like cheesy romances, you'll probably like it. Um, I don't think I'm going to be watching the film, even though it's got Amanda Stenberg in it. I, no, I'm not doing it. So anyway, that's it from me, guys. Um, uh, oh, everything, everything is actually really annoying to me all over again. Oh dear. Um, but anyway. 
I will see you in the next video, guys. Auf Wiedersehen.